Hi, this is Chuck Benedict, mentor for Team 997 Spartan Robotics in Corvallis, Oregon. In this video, I am going to continue with the bit banging exercise that I started from the last video um, in the process of describing how to write a uh, RoboRio WPL, WPI Lib device driver for a color sensor. And in the last video, uh, I started using a product called a Bus Pirate to interact with the color sensor uh, and got to a certain point and the video was going on too long. So I stopped it and reset to, to continue with this video, which is really, this video is the most interesting part because it actually reads values from the color sensor uh, so that we can prove that we can talk to it and interact with it correctly. So uh, what I, I have my bus pirate, I uh, turned on, I've got it connected to a color sensor and I have the, um, I2C mode selected and I have the power supply to the color sensor turned on. If you don't know how to do that, you need to watch the last video. So what I want to do now, uh, you'll remember from the last video, we reviewed the state transition diagram. Let me scroll back up to the data. This is the uh, color sensor data sheet. And at the top of the data sheet, there was the state transition diagram that I covered in some detail last time. Um, there are two, in order to get this thing to actually start sensing, um, you have to do two things. And I'm not going to read the text or whatever, but you have to assert a power on bit and you have to assert uh, this AEN or uh, I don't know what A stands for, but this enable bit. You got to um, assert both of those bits. So how do you do that for the bus through the bus pirate? Well, let's go down and look at the message that we need to send. So we need to write to a command register um, a, a, a data byte, essentially. And so we're going to use the I2C write protocol to do that, first off. Secondly, what register that we, do we need to write to and what value do we need to write? Well, if we look at the register address table, um, most devices will have a table that lists all the various command registers, which is useful. And you'll notice address zero, and this was dot, when we read the uh, introduction in last video, it actually said uh, uh, command register address zero, zero. But in this table, we can see it again, address zero is register name enable, and it enables states and interrupts. And so that's what we want to do. Um, what, so the, uh, the command that we want to send is zero, but um, what specific bits do we need to flip? We need to flip power on, we need to flip AEN. So let's go look at the enable register and see where those bits are. Uh, that's the command register. Here is the enable register. And lo and behold, there we go. Pa the power on bit is bit zero and the AEN bit is bit one. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it for now because it's, I'm here. Um, never overlook the little footnotes on these bits because oftentimes the little footnotes are what's going to actually trip you up. And when we actually get into writing code in Java to uh, exercise this sensor, this becomes important because this tripped me up for um, an hour while I was trying to figure out, well, I turned the sensor on and I enabled it, but why isn't it running? And you'll notice Footnote number two here, it says a minimum interval of 2.4 milliseconds must pass after PON is asserted before an RGBC can be initialized. And what they really mean is before you can assert AEN, even though it doesn't specifically say that, that's, that's actually what they mean. So what this tells me is that we, in order to actually turn on the device and to start enabling it to get out of its idle state and sensing color, we have to assert the uh, PON bit, and then we have to assert the AEN bit 2.4 milliseconds later, meaning we can't do it at the same time. Okay, so um, back then to the write message that we need to formulate. So in last video, we talked about how to obtain the slave address, uh, th this byte for the slave address writing the write bit. I'm not going to recover that here. Um, just know that that's uh, going to be uh, hex 52. If you need to know how to figure that out, go watch the last video. 
Next, the command code. So we know the command code we need to send is hex 00, but again, formulating the command is not that straightforward. We talked about it in the last video, but I will cover it here because it's important. The command register here says that bit seven has to be flipped in order to send a command. So how do we figure that out? Go to the calculator, clear, go into binary mode. Bit seven has to be flipped. So bit seven followed by uh, zero, 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 zero. All right, oops. So there's my, there's my byte with bit seven flipped. Uh, of course, I'm going to wind up oring that with zero. So in hex, I'm not gonna do it because it's obvious in hex, it's gonna be hex 80. So 80 is the uh, command that we need to send uh, via the bus pirate. Finally then, back to the data sheet, to enable power on first, do, 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 do. here we are, the power on bit, which is bit zero, that needs to be set to one. So back to the bus pirate. Uh, start bit, we're, we're formulating the right command. So start bit, uh, the slave address in write mode, 0x52, the uh, command register, that we want to write to, which in this case is 0x80, and the power on bit of bit zero needs to be flipped to one, so that is hex one. Bang, we got a, an acknowledgement back, so our write worked, or so we think. Next, we need to assert the AEN signal. Uh, so the AEN signal, or bit, you remember in the enable register is bit number one. So second bit, that's the two position for an eight bit um, byte. So that's the value two plus in the one position, that's the value one. So two plus one is three. So we know that we need to send hex three uh, for this next command. So I'm gonna go back over and I'm gonna reformulate this, this write command, zero x 52. 0x80 for the, uh, the uh, enable register, and then 0x03 to assert both of those bits. And I get an, uh, an acknowledgement back. Great. So now I have no visual way to, to know that the sensor is actually running. Um, but the way that I'm going to now ultimately figure it out is I'm going to try to take a reading and see if the reading makes sense. Now, how do you take a reading? So back to the data sheet. Uh, so we, we kind of suspect now that after having done this a couple of times, there must be a register out there um, for which you can access that once this thing is now enabled and the state is running and it's taking readings that you can read from, um, that will allow you to read the digitized current version from the photodiode um, of, of a particular photodiode. And watching the last video, I talked through the fact that there are, there's four photodiodes on the device and there are four 16-bit registers that contain simultaneously the uh, measured values of light coming into the photodiodes. So somewhere in this data sheet, it, they have to document where those registers are. And it so happens it's down toward the end. RGBC channel data registers, hex 14 through hex 1B. Here they are. We have the clear data registers, the red, the green, and the blue data registers. The low byte of the 16-bit value is first and then the high byte. So how do we formulate the command bit um, to start reading this? And what we can't, you know, we, we could read each one of these in turn, two bytes at a time, or one uh, in turn, one, one byte at a time if we want, but let's speed up the process and read all eight of these bytes at one time, and then we can manually go back and formulate them into their 16-bit words. To confirm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a racquetball, 
a red racquetball and maybe a blue racquetball, and we'll see. We should get a red value. If, if, if using the red racquetball, we should get a red value greater than the other two. And likewise, if a blue racquetball, we should get a blue uh, value greater than the other ones. So we're going to start at register 14. You'll notice that these, these increase sequentially. So I should be able to specify a write and read command at register 14 reading eight bytes all at once. How do we do that? Uh, if you'll recall, back then at the command register, let me go back up here, bit seven again has to be flipped. So back to my calculator, go back to binary. There's bit seven and I want to or that with hex uh, 14. One additional detail uh, back to the data sheet, and this is important. Uh, we, I, in the last video, I talked about this concept of double buffering and um, auto incrementing uh, I didn't talk about auto incrementing, but I talked about this concept of double buffering. And the way that the chip deals with that is that you have to send it a command to tell it that you're going to be reading multiple registers at one time so that it knows to keep the buffer intact while you're reading them. And in the command register, you'll notice auto increment protocol transaction because we're going to be issuing a multi-byte read command. We're going to be reading eight bytes at one time. So we need to flip bits five and six in this manner. So bit six needs to have a one in it and bit five needs to have a zero in it. How do you do that? Back to the calculator. I want to or, so I want to go back into binary and I want to or, so this is seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one, zero equals. Uh, I did that wrong. <laughs> My cheat sheet. I've got. I've got here. This should be B four. Uh, I probably did that wrong. Let me let me clear and do this over again. Sorry. So we know bit seven's got to be flipped to, to tell it that it's a command. So that's bit seven. Uh, oh, I did it backwards. It's got to be zero, 01 for 6 and 5. So back to my calculator, zero, 01, and then zero, 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 0. So that is the command mask. Now I need to or that with register 14 because that's the beginning register for the uh, reading the color sensors. So back to hex 14. Ah, B4. That is correct. So I need to send... Uh, the command B4 in order to be able to read the start of the sensors, also telling it that I'm going to be reading all at one time sequentially for eight bytes. Then I need to issue a read command, tell it that I want to read repeatedly for eight bytes, and then issue a stop bit. So how do I do all that? Back to the bus pirate. Start bit. Uh, I am going to write back to my message. This is the message that I'm trying to write right here. So the slave address, the right bit set, that is 0x52. The command that we just figured out, 0x84. Back to the bus pirate, another start bit. So there's a start bit. Uh, I want to now um, issue the slave address for with the read bit set, as it says right here, right, the read bit set, and that happens to be 0x53. Again, talked about in the last video. I'm not going to cover that again. Now we want to read, um, but the bus pirate supports the read command in a repetitive mode, and the way you say that is r colon 8, so we want to read 8 bytes, and we want to stop it. Now, I have my red racquetball. I'm going to hold the red racquetball right over the top of the color sensor. And uh, I have uh, the color sensor on and the white LED on the sensor is, is reflecting off the red ball. I can actually see red 
reflecting down so I know the sensor should be able to read the red color. Uh, I'm going to hit enter. And of course I get all zeros. Why did I get all zeros? Well, because I, I typed the command in incorrectly. So let's do it again. One more time. Uh, I'm not going to go through all these again. I'm just going to type the command in incorrectly. Uh, 0xb4, that was what I screwed up. Start bit, 0x53 for reading, and I want to read 8 bytes, and I want to enter the stop bit. Okay, here's my ball. One more time. I'm going to hold the ball over the sensor. I'm going to hit enter. Oh, I have data. This looks better now. Okay. Now, um, back to the data sheet one more time so that we know what we're looking at here. Uh, down toward the bottom, we have all of our all of our sensors, uh, sensor values. So the clear, it starts with clear, it goes low, high, then it goes red, green, blue. Um, what I'm going to do is um, bring up, I actually have this little cheat sheet here, which I probably will publish for you guys because it's probably, it's, it's going to be useful. So uh, what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to go to the uh, bus pirate command here and see if I can copy these out. Uh, does copy work? Oh, it does. Nice. So I'm going to go back over here. Okay, so um, so it's low bit, sorry, low byte, then high byte, which of course um, makes it, you have to flip these around, right? So this would be 07 DA. That. All right, so there are our four 16-bit values. And again, this is the clear, uh, it's a clear, clear, red, green, blue. So that's our clear, red, green, blue. Makes sense, right? Got a red racquetball. So I would expect the ADC count, if it's, you know, if it's counting, um, or if it's, if it's sampling current measured, uh, I would think that the red sensor would be more excited than the other two, and therefore we get more counts. So this does make sense that the red value is higher than the green or the blue value. So, so far it makes perfect sense. At this point, I think I've sort of sufficiently given you a flavor of, uh, you know, how to interact with the bus pirate, how to read a data sheet, how to get data. I could do the blue ball. I think it's getting kind of long. I think you get the idea. Trust me, I've already done it, and I've already proven to myself that uh, this is working correctly. So why don't I end on that note uh, and uh, work on recording the subsequent videos to uh, actually write code and test that code using the bus pirate, which is going to be unique, um, and um, you know, finish it that way. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.